Sonos, a very tasteful living room sound adornment. Today we've got the new era 300 and 100 line. Both Linus and I have looked at Sonos equipment before in the past. He's had a look at the Arc. I think I had a look at the Beam. Uh, but today I get to fondle the new Era 300. Can I say fondle on short circuit? Today I get to fondle the Era 300s. So we have all the colors here today. We have both white and black. Uh, but I think we're gonna look at the 300s. Uh, this one's got a nice gouge in it. We've got these cool little locking things on the side. You just kind of pop them open and then the top just slides right off. That's nice. Got our speaker here in a nice little wrap. Pull that open. My God, it's heavy. Oh, it's not just like crappy fabric covering. It's like this, it's got a hem on it. That's kind of amazing. And they're both white. <laughs> Logistics. <laughs> great, this is off to a great start. It looks like we have matching power cables there. We have a let's get started menu. It's nice, nice printed heavy cardboard. So we'll leave that to reference in a bit. Cord is, yeah, rubbery, kind of plasticky. Little memory, which is great. This is pretty much the whole, the whole thing. Metal front, which is nice, metal grill. Kind of a soft touch plastic. It's matte, no piano black, thank God. Nice big surface on the back. Slight indent there, which is kind of tasteful. It's a very pretty thing, I would say. Feet are rubberized, which is kind of nice, non-slip. There's some mounting holes on the bottom for the wall mounts that are an optional extra. There's also a floor stand as well. We'll talk about that a bit later. Controls are up here on the top. There's a voice assistant button, and it looks like the little slider thing and some playback controls too. And new for Sonos, apparently, is Bluetooth. Yay! I don't know, apparently this has always been a thing and they haven't really included that before. We have a silence mute switch here on the back for your voice assistant. And then there's a little USB-C cable thing there, which we'll also talk about a bit later. Okay, so that's the 300, the big one. We have a nice choice here between white and or white. Thanks, uh, thanks again. Same sort of thing, comes in this nice little sock. We've got similar markings on the back. We have our Bluetooth button. This one's vertical, which is kind of cool. And the silence and the USB port. And then on the bottom, we have our power input, which goes in there like that. And uh, the same sort of hole for your wall mounts or stands. And they come with different stands. You have to buy different stands if you want these and different stands if you want this one. This one's power cord is on the back though, which goes like there, which is a bit of a weird choice, honestly. You know, if I'm gonna mount this against a wall as it's supposed to be a surround speaker, then it's gonna be here. Why not put it in the bottom and then have it route out the back like this? Uh, I have some thoughts on that later. Bell said he really struggled to get this one out. And oh my God, he is right. <laughs> this is awful. I'm a weak little man. There's not enough, there's not enough room to like get a proper grip on it. Jesus. Okay, there we go. My hands are broken now. Same sort of solid construction. These feel really, really, really solid. No compressibility anywhere. Nice and metal everywhere. There's already some like brown or scuffing or something. I have got dirty hands. I just washed my hands. Yeah, I washed my hands first time this uh, month. General size of these, I think for the 100, the size is kind of nice just to kind of maybe have on a shelf or like behind you somewhere. Should be nice and easy to hide away. The weight is really quite nice and hefty. I'm not entirely sure if that's added in as metal or if it's like just actually constructed, maybe with a metal core or something like that. Sometimes companies will add weight to their products to make them feel more premium. I'm not entirely sure that's the case here. The power cables do not want to come out. There we go. This one, same sort of thing. It's rather hefty, maybe about what, five, 10 pounds, something like that. The construction of this also feels really good. I can't like bend this front grill in at all. Sona says that there's some specialized waveguides in the front, which have like little spiky things. I really wanted to like rip this off and, and demo those, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Some small panel gap issues right here at the bottom. So yeah, I mean, it's got a nice fit and finish. I think that little panel gap thing is a little bit problematic. I would expect better for how much this costs. Yeah, now I'm seeing it everywhere and the speaker's ruined for me. Uh, <laughs> the shape of it's uh, shape of it's pretty nice, a little bit fatter at the back than the front, like everybody should be. 
Uh, yeah, I think I could see this on a bookshelf or even maybe mounted up at the top of the ceiling or on their stands that they do uh, behind. I don't think it would be too in your face. The white is probably a little bit more pronounced than the black, but it, I guess it depends on your interior design. Some more fun colors would have been nice too. I probably would have bought these if they were like bright yellow. They might be great for uh, bookshelf speakers and accent or something like that. You could always spray bomb them, I guess. The feet seem good. Yeah, they're really rubbery. They're like gripping really well into the table. It's got a lot of weight on just a little tiny <laughs> uh, footprint. So maybe not a table speaker. I don't know uh, if it's more rigid than this one. The 100s are are supported completely on the bottom, so they don't, they don't move at all there. They're good. Well, let's see how these sound. We've got to get them hooked up to the app, but before we have to get you hooked up to our sponsor, Alpaca Keyboards. How's that for a segue? Very good. Very good. Editor, leave in him asking how that <laughs> Stop it, editor, no. <laughs> Thanks to Alpaca Keyboards for sponsoring today's video. Alpaca Keyboards' newest keyboard, the White Fox Eclipse, features an iconic design based on the original White Fox that helped popularize the 65% layout. It has a combination of the most desirable features, gasket mounting, programmable ability Bluetooth, RGB, and Cherry Profile PBT keycaps. The White Fox Eclipse is also the first keyboard to feature hot swappable cases thanks to its magnetic gasket mounting system. There are options for a custom CNC aluminum case with both low and high profile designs. And if you're a Mac user, don't worry. The keycap set is designed to be compatible with both Mac and PC. Check out the White Fox Eclipse Kickstarter at the link below. Okay, let's get these boys hooked up to the app. No power button, I don't think. Oh, there is a light on the front. That's nice, it's nice and subtle. Might be waiting for pairing. It would be nice if it like bonked or something. I need to give it uh, location permissions. Storage, I don't know what's going on anymore. And we'll give it microphone, we'll just give it everything. Here's my social insurance number. It's getting it ready. It's gonna play a chime. All right, connecting to the Wi-Fi. I like that they can support 5G. So many IoT devices these days only support 2.4. Uh, there's an update available, of course, because there has to be. And we're getting advertisements for Dolby Atmos, which we'll definitely be talking about a bit later. I'm trying to figure out exactly what these do, because Sonos won't tell us. We're gonna add alarms, we can group speakers, we can save favorites. We can personalize it and enable automatic updates. Neat. I'll see you in 20 minutes when this is done. So it looks like we can set up speaker groups and things like that on a room basis. So if you had these in your bedroom or your living room or your kitchen, then they would all be kind of different zones. We can have a, a subwoofer, which is also a product they offer. I believe you can have up to two if they're the same. And then we can also add a stereo pair. Each pair of speakers have to be the same model. You can't like cross match different models together. We have some EQ settings, bass, treble, and a loudness toggle, which is on by default. True play, which I believe is some sort of technology to make it more uh, acoustic. That's kind of their version of, of uh, room tuning. So let's, let's give that a go. It's gonna be loud, I hope. <laughs> That was nice, uh, just from the sound of that. It seems like it's gonna be a nice performative speaker. Uh, it seems to have six drivers or something like that. Two woofers in the side, two tweeters uh, firing up in this direction, another tweeter you know, that has a horn that kind of fires up, and then another one in the front. So it's supposed to do Dolby Atmos, and I think it's supposed to be three channel. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's two channel, with some psychoacoustic tuning to like use the upfiring thing. Sonos doesn't seem to actually list how many channels these are. They kind of avoid that in their material, which is a little bit strange. Uh, we also have a height audio setting, which kind of gives me the hope that the upfiring is its own dedicated channel. It also has a line in. So no aux cord on this one. They've gone the iPhone route. You need to buy a dongle if you wanna have line it. You can buy a $20 USB-C to three and a half millimeter jack, which plugs in right there. Or for the low, low price of $40, you can buy a combo jack that has an ethernet port and a three and a half millimeter jack, which is strange. It's not like there's any room left to have that on the back here. I think we'll, we'll get some crab rave in this now. 
So there's nothing coming out of the front right now. It really is just coming out of the sides. I guess it's maybe why they're angled forward a little bit. So that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. It's half volume. So let's turn it up. Let's see, let's destroy our brains. Okay, I can't. That's extremely loud. Uh, that is like hearing damagingly loud. That's awesome. No distortion whatsoever. That's a very, very good result. Uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that actually. <sighs> There's no sub in it and it's really quite bassy as well, which is nice. I think if you were having this in a home theater setup, I would pair it with a sub, but this is really good performance uh, already, which is good to see. Let's listen to it like I'm actually listening to a speaker. So I'm gonna sit here. So that sounds bad because it's going that way. It's not playing music at me, which is kind of interesting. I'm gonna go over there and listen to it, see if it's better. Cause I'm sitting in front of it and I think it's supposed to be like a room speaker. So goodbye. Okay, what I thought was gonna happen happened and it sounds really good sort of around the entire room. Uh, almost exactly the same as if I was sitting next to it. So this is definitely designed as kind of a throw around the room speaker. Um, sitting here is kind of not great, but everywhere else is really quite nice. Uh, let's try some Dolby Atmos some music. Okay, so I'm gonna play this song, which is on Apple Music in a spatial audio playlist, which is the Dolby Atmos something or other. I hope we have that still enabled here. Unfortunately, we'll have to dub over this with something like smooth jazz, but uh, at least I'll be able to see if the top firing tweeter and the front firing tweeter actually tweet. I don't know if this is even right. Uh, this doesn't sound like spatial music. I was gonna say, I would choose the song of the weekend. Okay, yeah, this says Dolby Atmos down here and those speakers are definitely on right now. This is sick. Uh, yeah, so it's really good now uh, that all the speakers are working. I don't know why you can't just turn the other two on when you're playing stereo music, because it's one speaker, so it's not gonna get the stereo separation. Just play all the speakers. I mean, I'm sitting next to it and it's supposed to be farther away. Maybe a little hollow in the mids because the woofers are trying to like compensate with a hell of a lot of bass. Uh, but yeah, good enough, I think, for a tiny little speaker. Let's get a 100 going and compare the two. My name is Dan, the man, and I'm here to say you should buy an Aero 300 and use my promo code down in the link in the description today. <laughs> This is also obscenely loud. A uh, little bit of distortion from the tweeter, I think a little bit of crackling, but no one in their goddamn right mind would listen to music that loud. There's also some nice air movement from the woofers on the side. This one's way more directional, kind of more facing this way. The bass kind of propagates more from the side, which would be good. Send it out into the room and have it bounce around where you want the tweeters a bit more directional than maybe the 300 provides. Unless you really want to go crazy with the Atmos system, you could probably get away with this instead. This one obviously doesn't support Dolby because there's touch controls at the top where there should be a speaker. So yeah, it does have this guy angled tweeters and one woofer. So there's three speakers, so this will be just a two channel where this one is claiming possibly a four channel, maybe. Probably just a three, if I'm being honest. Let's do a stereo pair. That was actually amazing. Okay, so what it's done when I've made a stereo pair, which is kind of interesting actually, is disabled these upfiring tweeters and it's just playing out of the front ones now. So now they're acting much more like directional speakers, which is kind of clever. I would like control over that in the app, um, but removing that control simplifies it for the end user, I think. Uh, let's actually point them towards me like they're supposed to be because I'm just getting all bass from the sides. Yeah, that's great. Um, I mean, having the mid drivers out the side is kind of, I guess, a good idea sometimes. Uh, depending, they seem to be a little bit lower down in the frequency range um, than like a traditional woofer. It seems to reproduce the low frequencies better than some of maybe the high mids, but it's not to its massive detriment. I mean, I'm being very particular here. That's uh, certainly of an acceptable sound quality, which is which is really good to, to see. Blinding lights in Dolby Atmos. Atmos is really strong there. That is actually amazing. Uh, that's 
that's a that's great. That's really good. Uh, I, I think that's like worth the price of admission right there. The Atmos is where these really do shine. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I don't like praising things for what kind of maybe feel like Gilnix or maybe I'm old now, but that really does improve it. I wonder if that's because the speakers are more tuned for Atmos than maybe they are like normal playback. I think maybe if we just had the stereo music with these extra tweeters enabled that it would sound as good. I don't know if our ceiling height or even the layout here really makes the Atmos shine, but the music sounds better. It sounds more spacious, probably because we have some extra drivers in play than we don't with stereo audio. There's something I didn't mention is I liked the default EQ on the 300s, which I threw on the ground. These 100s may be a little bit of a bass heavy, probably maybe room, uh, but from sitting here on the desk, negative four is a little bit more balanced. They're kind of a bit overpowering and the mids are kind of squashed. Um, so the 300s have a bit more of an even sound than the 100s here. Uh, but these are still quite good. I think maybe I'm just spoiled from those 300s. I would much rather have a pair of these than one of those, definitely. Uh, these are about half the cost of a 300. So these ERA 100s are 250 bucks each. And so that means they're $500 for two. And the 300 is 450 bucks. Uh, so if you buy a pair of these, you get a bit of a discount from them and you buy them individually. And the stands for the 300s are about 280 bucks. So you can have a pair of stands or like maybe one of these for your bedroom, right? It's kind of interesting. And then, you know, a $40 dongle to put on the back here. And if we look at their exploded view, like I think there's a whole bunch of space in the bottom here. So if I wanna put it on a shelf, I can put it like that. And if I wanna put it on a stand, I can route the cable into the stand on the 100s, but I don't know, giant cable in the back? Like it just looks gross. Let me be able to hide it underneath if I wanna put it on a shelf or if I'm gonna wall mount it, like I can't have it flush with the wall. There's no reflex at the back. It's, it's just a little bit frustrating, I think. In that same sort of vein, I don't understand why I can only pair two of these. So in each room, you're only allowed to have one stereo pair which means that if I wanted to say, listen to quadraphonic audio with four of these and like really experience uh, Dolby Atmos music, I can only get two speakers. It's like they don't want my money. Because we have four here, it would be really nice to maybe have two of these guys at the front and two of these behind me as maybe some side fills. Maybe I've got a big room, but because it's all in one room, I can only have one stereo pair. Sonos can support something like 32 active devices simultaneously. So why can't I buy a whole bunch of these and have a, what was it, 27.1.10 system with 10 up firing speakers and you know, sound everywhere, like Dolby Atmos is supposed to be able to function as? Something clearly missing from the Sonos documentation, at least what I could find, is a clear indication of how many channels each of these guys have. Apparently Sonos can support 5.1.2, but that's kind of from what I found on the internet and not exactly from their documentation. I shouldn't have to go digging through community forums and other posts and news articles to figure out what I'm actually about to buy. If anybody knows, please let me know. Uh, this is kind of beyond my ability to test here. Labs, where are you at? Honestly, uh, for the price and performance ratio, these sound really good. At least the 300s out of the box, no tuning, nothing like that. You know, we do the room thing, whatever. Sounds great. Uh, for $480 each, I think I would definitely recommend getting a pair, which is even more money. Uh, as a singular speaker, listening to non-Atmos audio, which is gonna limit you to a lot of music, eh, it doesn't, I think you can do better with a cheaper speaker if you're getting one. Two, spatial audio, even one with spatial audio, quite incredible. Um, two is really where your money is. I can see how great the system is if they would implement it a little bit differently. It's like, it's right there. Just have speakers as individuals and let people do what they want with them and have as many as they want. Like, do you not want our money? Do you not want me to go out and buy 10 of these and put them all around my house? Cause I want to, this sounded f good. And you won't let me because your ecosystem doesn't function like it should. It's sad, it's short-sighted, it's pathetic. Um, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined.